Hello, thank you for joining me today. My name is Jamal Miller, and you're here for day three of the advanced track in our MailChimp e-commerce marketer um, masterclass series. Um, today, I'm going to be sharing a little bit about the e-commerce marketer tech stack and giving you five must-have integrations to help you drive holiday sales. My hope is that you'll leave here today with at least one tip that you can take back um, in regards to integrations um, to maximize the sales that you'll get this holiday season and potentially learn a bit, little bit along the way. So I um, first I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jamal Miller. I'm a director of product marketing here at, at MailChimp. Um, my focus specifically is around helping MailChimp users to get more out of the MailChimp platform through the use of integrations and other third party tools. Um, I have about 15 years of marketing experience. Um, including some e-commerce marketing experience. I spent some time as a sales and marketing lead, uh, category lead at Amazon. Um, and my passion really lies in helping businesses thrive through automation and understanding the customer life cycle and understanding how driving those micro conversions within the customer life cycle can ultimately lead, lead to higher sales uh, volume and uh, more revenue. Um, so I'm excited to hopefully share some of that knowledge with you all today. So first off, why does this matter? Um, and hopefully, if you signed up for today's session, uh, you have some idea of why this matters and you're interested in the subject. But just to give a little bit of background around why this is so important, particularly this time of year as you're preparing for the holiday season. Um, there's a great quote that I love from Dan Zarella um, that goes, marketing without data is like driving with your eyes closed. Um, and it's really important to understand the power that data brings to your marketing. Um, I like to think of it as the fuel that powers great marketing. And particularly this time of year, as you try to cut through the clutter of holiday season messaging that's bombarding um, your customers or potential customers, data can be one of the competitive advantage that you bring to the table. If you think about the unique set of data that you possess um, about your customers, about their transactions, about their activities within your website and your ecosystem, about your marketing and how that's performed over time. When you combine all of that data together, you really have a unique set of data that no other business possesses. So if you think of it in that way, it really can become a competitive advantage for you as you think about how you're going to drive uh, your holiday season. Um, and if you approach it from that standpoint, uh, then you'll be getting a leg up over the competition. And hopefully some of these tools that I'll talk about will, will help you think through how you can use that data as a competitive advantage. So there are obviously a lot of different types of data. Um, these are four that I'm highlighting here, but there are others. Four that are, these four are, I think are kind of most relevant to the conversation that we're having today. Transactional data is obviously representative of the information that you gather when a customer makes a purchase from you. Um, this includes things like what they purchased, when they purchased, quantities of what they purchased, um, what sizes of, of items they purchased, if, it's, uh, if we're talking about clothing or something along those lines. Behavioral data references how customers or prospects engage with your brand. Um, so this typically is captured through data points like clicks, impressions, opens, website visits, and other types of interactions. Um, attitudinal data uh, largely references preferences or opinions that someone has shared with you about your product or brand. The most common ways of collecting this information are through customer reviews um, or survey responses. And the last area I'll highlight here is descriptive data. Uh, this typically gives you insight into overarching data sets and trends. So you can think about, you know, what are the seasonal trends that you've seen historically in your business in terms of sales? or what months are the most popular for sales, what items are the most popular in your store, things of that nature, kind of large data sets and making sense of those um, for trending information. And why these, these different types of data become important is because you can turn those into very actionable insights, right? So as you start to take these disparate pieces of data and combine them and, and, and um, analyze them, you can start to learn things like, understanding when a customer is likely to make a next purchase in, in terms of things like buying intent, um, identifying who your most loyal customers are, identifying which customers are potentially at risk for churning um, and th that you may want to reach out to with some sort of special offer, understanding what individual customer preferences are so you can start to personalize experiences and things of that nature. 
these data points start to form some very important insights that are largely going to drive your marketing strategy, as you, as, particularly as you go into the holiday season. However, the challenge that most e-commerce marketers have is that this data lives in a myriad of different tools that they may be using to run their business, right? Um, so for example, your transactional data may live in your e-commerce tool or your payment processing tool. Uh, your behavioral data may live in your website uh, tool or maybe the tools that you're using to run your marketing channels. Uh, sentiment and attitudinal data might live in a separate survey tool that you're using or maybe you have a customer management platform where you're doing um, running things like chat sessions um, or capturing customer sentiment. So the challenge is how do I bring all of these pieces together into one place so that I can make sense of them and from a marketing standpoint really use them to generate those insights that we discussed on the previous slide and to form that competitive advantage that I talked about as you form your marketing strategy. And the good news is that integrations really serve as a way to help you do this. Um, connecting all of these tools to your marketing platform is one of the most important undertakings that you can, that you can take because it really starts to connect the dots between these pieces of data and allow you to make those insights. And luckily, pre-built integrations between platforms provide a relatively easy way for you to do exactly that. Just for a kind of level setting for the conversation, uh, when I talk about integrations, I'm talking about API-driven connections between apps that allow you to share data between two different platforms. Um, now, there are custom integrations that can be built, right? If you have a developer um, that you have access to, uh, that you, you can reach out to them and ask them to connect two uh, platforms together by building some sort of custom um, uh, connection via API. Uh, but primarily what I'm talking about today are pre-built and pre-packaged integrations between two different platforms that are relatively easy to use, um, should not require a developer for you to get them hooked up, um, and can in, in many cases have you up and running um, fairly quickly. You know, Within minutes or an hour, um, you can have data flowing from one platform to the next. What I'm uh, hoping to share with you today is tools uh, to help you do that. And the benefits are, are pretty, pretty impressive, right? So if you joined our session uh, with Jenny Gibson talking about uh, automation, um, you might have heard this stat or some version of this, but what we see with MailChimp customers is that 93% uh, increase in open rates when they use automations and that 174% increase in click rates when they use automations compared to bulk emails. And the thing that you need to drive automations is data. You need a trigger. Um, in a lot of cases, these integrations are going to bring that data over that's going to trigger an automation for you. Um, and then the second key benefit here is the ability to scale. Um, at this time of year, there's a lot going on. You have a lot on your plates. Um, if you're manually exporting and importing data from one tool to another, um, you are doing it wrong, <laughs> essentially. You're, you're, you're spending a lot of time that you could potentially be saving. And it also ensures that you can speak to every customer at the right point in their journey. Um, using bulk email, it's hard to uh, isolate every single customer and meet their needs at, at a particular moment. But using integrations and adding that to your campaigns, it allows you to do things like personalize your content, personalize when and how you're interacting with people um, so that you can give everyone an optimal experience this time of year and do so in a way that doesn't require you to add too much more time to your plate. So with that in mind, I'm going to share five e-commerce integrations to help you drive holiday sales. Um, and now's the point where I will be transparent and let you know that we're actually going to talk about more than five individual in integrations. Um, and the reason is uh, I want to make sure that uh, we cover as many tools as possible uh, and that I highlight categories um, that may be relevant to each of your businesses. So over the course of this, uh, these next few slides, we will talk about more than five integrations, uh, but hopefully you find something that's relevant to your business. All right, so first up, Tip number one, and I cannot stress this highly enough. If you have not done so, please connect your e-commerce store to your marketing platform. Um, it is probably the most uh, vital action that you can take in terms of integrations in preparing for the holiday season. Um, it unlocks so many different 
um, ways that you can engage with your customers, so many ways that you can create more, more personalized experiences. Um, and the good news is that with MailChimp, we do have integrations with um, pretty much all of the major, major e-commerce players uh, in the business if you're not already using one of our e-commerce stores uh, directly through MailChimp. Um, so you think about WooCommerce and BigCommerce. Um, if you're a Shopify user, our ShopSync app is the recommended solution. Um, but there's a tool for you to connect your e-commerce store to MailChimp. And like I said, it's probably the most important action that you can take um, this holiday season. And let me tell you a little bit about why um, and what is unlocked when you do connect your store to MailChimp. Um, first, automated customer journeys. Um, things like abandoned cart emails, purchase follow-ups, um, re-engagement campaigns for folks who have not engaged with you in a while. Uh, all of this is powered based off of the data that comes in from your e-commerce uh, integration, the, the information about uh, when the last time someone made a purchase was, all of that transactional information that I talked about earlier is really coming in and powering these automated customer journeys. Um, and speaking to the, the idea of scale, setting up automations is the thing that's going to unlock so much more scale for you this season. Um, and powering that is, is really uh, done through e-commerce uh, integrations. The second really important point that you gain when you start to connect your e-commerce store to MailChimp is personalized product recommendations. Personalized content in email is proven over and over again to be better performing than static content. And by connecting your store, you can then start to serve up recommendations to a particular customer in the body of an email based on previous purchases that they've made. Um, so as you're thinking about trying to um, increase basket size or overall revenue from each individual customer on average, the way that you do that is to start to take their preferences and serve it back to them uh, with other items that they might purchase. And connecting your e-commerce store unlocks those personalized product recommendations that are gonna drive uh, that engagement. And lastly, uh, advanced segmentation. So uh, when you do connect your e-commerce store, to MailChimp, we'll be able to do some of that analysis that I mentioned earlier to uh, drive those insights around things like who are your most valuable customers or who are the customers that are most likely to make a purchase soon. Um, we can actually do the analysis for you on the back end once you connect that e-commerce transactional data into MailChimp so that you can build segments and campaigns based on that information, right? If you want to send a special campaign to your most loyal customers, uh, a coupon code or a, a discount to, to uh, thank them for their loyalty to your brand. Um, or if you want to kind of segment out your entire customer base based on customer value so that you can send potentially a different message to your high value customers compared to maybe your lower value ones, you want to uh, do something special for them to try and get them going and increase their overall customer value. Um, those types of advanced segmentations are um, unlocked when you connect your store. Um, and just to drive the point home a little bit more, uh, we have a case study. Um, so Good Die Young is a beauty and personal care brand that's based in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, they were founded in 2016, and uh, they're a MailChimp customer who uh, used our WooCommerce integration to uh, increase their revenue by 305%. Uh, their monthly revenue was increased after connecting their e-commerce store uh, to MailChimp. Now, that 305% increase sounds astronomical, right? It's, it, sounds, <laughs> it sounds like a lot. Um, but when you start to break down the actual actions that they took, um, to get to that number, um, it's, it's really tangible things that you can start to do with your business as well. Um, so they obviously connected uh, their WooCommerce store to MailChimp and started syncing over customer and order information. They created segments based on purchase activity. They used our MailChimp uh, predictive analytics tools to target customers who were most likely to buy. That's that advanced segmentation that I talked about earlier. Um, and then they sent coupons and promotional codes to thank their most loyal customers and re-engage in active ones. So these are very, very tangible steps that you can take once you connect your e-commerce store to MailChimp and start to see very real outcomes. Um, and this is something that, these are tactics that you can employ going into the holiday season um, as you're looking to uh, drive sales. So tip number two, connect your Google Analytics or your analytics platform of choice to MailChimp. Um, here, before I jump in, I do want to give a shout out 
to uh, the upcoming session we have with Ben Kruger from uh, Google, uh, who's going to share the top seven data secrets for maximizing your holiday sales. So I'm, I'm going to try not to, um, to overstep uh, his presentation too much. But I do want to encourage you to connect your Google Analytics platform to your MailChimp account if you have not already. When you talk to start to talk about what that unlocks for you and your business, you really gain deeper insights and understanding into how people are moving between your email campaigns and your other campaigns that you're running on MailChimp and your website. And that's so important to really understand kind of how the traffic that you're driving from your campaigns onto your website is then converting so that you can see which of your marketing channels are really driving revenue and conversions at the end of the day. Um, so you can learn about how to optimize your, um, your marketing strategy for the channels that are really driving conversion. Um, and especially for the holiday, it's really important to understand that customer journey um, that's being taken. Um, so in addition to those insights that you get, those deeper insights into like how your email campaigns are driving um, conversions on your website, you can also start to look at multi-channel attribution with Google Analytics once you've connected that into MailChimp to get a better understanding of how potentially multiple touch points are driving to a conversion, right? So maybe it's a customer has interacted with an email and some of your social posts and potentially visited your site one other time, didn't make a purchase and then came back. Um, you can start to understand and visualize those patterns so that you can know what the typical customer journey looks like for people who do convert and then optimize your campaigns to that, that uh, optimal journey. Uh, so definitely, if you have not connected your, your analytics tool to MailChimp, it's a good next step to take as well um, so that you can get deeper understanding into this. Tip number three, uh, I want to talk about uh, the social media big three. Um, so Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you're like most e-commerce marketers, you are heavily using, um, if not all of these platforms, at least uh, some combination of them. Uh, to drive your e-marketing, uh, your e-commerce marketing program. Um, and social is an extremely important channel, particularly this time of year. Um, so as we think about what is unlocked when you start to make these connections, you don't want to lose the traffic that's coming to uh, your, your social channels. Um, so one of the great ways that you can use this channel is to, by adding signup forms, for example, to your uh, Facebook page to collect contact information from the people that are visiting your Facebook page, bring that information into MailChimp and to be able to follow up with them. Uh, the other thing that this unlocks, which I think is really important this time of year, is retargeting, right? So if you think about this, this kind of cycle that exists when you start to connect things like social ads and social retargeting ads and a channel like email within the MailChimp platform, what you can start to do is retarget people based on when they visit, visited your site. So say you send out an email campaign, um, you get a, a great open rate and you get a, a nice number of people clicking through and visiting your website. Some portion of the, that audience does not end up making a purchase. Once you've connected to these social platforms for publishing uh, ads and retargeting ads, you can look at the people who have not made a purchase, retarget them with ads on Facebook or Instagram and try and get them back into your site to kind of finish the purchase cycle. It's a really great way to kind of connect the dots between those channels and really use those channels to play off of each other when you're thinking about paid retargeting ads and email um, to drive your holiday sales. Um, and especially this time of year, right, you're going to be uh, increasing the amount of um, communication that you have with your audience. Uh, when you take into account, you know, increases in emails, uh, you want to make sure that you have a way to to kind of leverage that traffic that you're you're driving with retargeting ads to bring them back to your site and complete a purchase. Remind them of, of why they visited your site. The next category I want to talk about is design software. Uh, examples of that being Canva and uh, Adobe Photoshop. Um, now, on on its face value, it feels like it kind of fits into a different category than the others, right? Um, because we're not talking about really pulling data over, but really um, assets that are going to allow you to scale your operations going into this extremely busy time of year. So if you think about it from that standpoint, um, connecting your, your design software to MailChimp can be an incredibly um, uh, fruitful activity for you going into this time of year. Um, 
to share a little bit more about what that looks like, um, when you connect a tool like Canva to MailChimp, you can automatically sync um, design work that's happening and being created in a tool like Canva into your content studio in MailChimp so that you have easy access to any of those assets that are being developed. Um, and what that does uh, for the holiday season is really speed up and scale your operation. So if you have a designer who's working on that work separately in a tool like Canva or Photoshop, um, they can easily sync that up so that you have easy access when they've completed those designs and you don't have to kind of go back and forth with your designer to get the most updated designs uh, for your campaigns. Um, the other thing that this does is allows you to ensure that you have a consistent brand presence across all of your channels during this time of year um, so that you can make sure you're putting your best foot forward. Another kind of tidbit that I'll add here is while I didn't kind of bucket uh, this tool under the design tools section, um, we also have an integration with Instagram that allows you to pull in any Instagram um, images that are being used into your content studio as well. So another tip to think about is using kind of Instagram as a tool to see what's driving engagement in terms of imagery. And then you can use some of those same image assets in your other campaigns that you're running through, through um, MailChimp uh, so that you can kind of have a consistent message and also use the thing that's working the best in, in the social channel to drive engagement. And tip number five, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, customer support tools tools like live chat and Zendesk. Um, I talked about um, kind of that attitudinal data um, that you have in some of your tools. And I think these in particular are really important as you're going to be getting a lot more inquiries, questions, having a lot more interactions uh, with your customers during this time of year. You may be using a live chat or a similar chat bot type of tool on your website to help to drive engagement. Um, and they provide a really great opportunity to add new members to your email lists and also to action off of that and immediately start to follow up with them via other channels um, so that you can keep the conversation going and ultimately drive sales. Was how their visit was to your website and if they have any other questions and to start to follow up potentially with things like special offers to kind of get them over the hump if they're considering making a purchase. This also enables behavior-based automations um, so within our customer journey builder, we actually have a pre-built um, trigger with live chat that allows you to kick off a customer journey um, with the ending of a live chat chat session. Um, and immediately after that chat session is ended, that um, customer that you communicated with will be added to a journey where you can follow up with them, uh, send them a survey, send them a special offer, send them your latest deal, um, send them their, your best sellers, things of that nature, so that you can um, make sure that you keep the conversation going and play off of that, um, that opportunity that you've, you've had to talk with them on your website. The other thing that you can do is uh, gather survey uh, and customer feedback. So when you do connect these tools to MailChimp, um, you can use our native surveys tool to follow up with those users to ask them about their session, um, ask them about their perceptions of your brand, and really start to gather more of that attitudinal data that's going to help you in the long run understand how you can improve the customer experience um, or to um, understand what people are looking for when they visit your site. So because you're going to be seeing a lot more traffic to your website this time of year, uh, it's a great time to start thinking about how do you uh, leverage some of these customer engagement tools that are embedded on your website to uh, drive engagement with your other channels and build your mailing lists. So in summary, um, four key takeaways that I want to make sure you leave here with today. Um, number one, remember that data is the fuel that drives great marketing. Um, if you don't have great data, it's very hard to put the right message in front of the right customer that's going to drive conversion and that's going to drive um, revenue ultimately. Um, tip number two is that you already have great sources of this data likely in the business tools that you're using to run your business. So take inventory of what are those tools that you're running your business with. And they may be across different uh, categories of things. 
um, you know, e-commerce, we talked about social, um, there's even things like accounting tools and financial tools that may be useful to you. Take inventory of everything that's in your tech stack today and understand how you could be using that data to drive great marketing. Look into what integrations you have uh, available to you. Uh, number three, uh, as I mentioned before, kind of the most important takeaway from today, uh, if you do nothing else after you leave this session, please go back and connect your e-commerce store to MailChimp. And as I mentioned, we have pre-built integrations with all of the major um, e-commerce players um, if you're not already using our MailChimp stores uh, to run your e-commerce business. And the last thing I'll share is make sure that you're thinking about your data as a competitive advantage this holiday season. Um, again, only your business has the unique set of the uh, unique set of data that combines all of the actions of your customers and prospects across your entire ecosystem. And if you think of that as your competitive advantage, it really creates um, a new way of looking at how you want to bring all of that data together to really um, cut through the noise of everything that customers are going to be seeing uh, over the course of the holiday season. So with that, I will stop here and we'll bring on Amy to lead us through some question and answers. Thanks, Jamal. Hi, everyone. Let's get started. Okay, does the use of Zapier affect GDPR, CCPA, POPIA, et cetera? What steps can we take to ensure compliance when using Zapier? Uh, so this is, I love this question because it allows me to talk about a couple of things. Um, one, Zapier, for, for th those who are not familiar, um, is basically a connector tool that um, allows you to, if there is not a pre-built integration between two tools that you're using, um, Zapier, in a lot of cases, can serve as that middleware that connects the dots between those two tools. Um, so it's a great place to look if you do not see an integration with a tool that you're using for your business within our MailChimp ecosystem, um, you can use Zapier potentially to connect that information into MailChimp. Now, the question specifically around compliance is a really, really good one. Um, obviously, this time of year, uh, you want to be careful that you're not um, breaking any laws as you're interacting with prospects and customers. Um, what I would encourage you to do is first think about the tool that you're using to collect customer data, right? That's the most important first step. Um, so if you're using a third party tool to collect customer data, make sure that you are collecting that data in a compliant fashion that includes all of the needed marketing permissions so that you can continue the conversation with those with those um, leads, right? That's that's the first step. So that that actually doesn't have anything to do with Zapier. That's actually before that before data goes into Zapier with whatever tool that you're using to collect that data in the first place. Now, once that tool goes into Zapier, um, what you'll want to make sure you pass through are those marketing permissions so that you have a log that a customer did opt in to receive marketing from me. You're bringing that data point into Zapier. And then when you do sync that data into MailChimp, uh, there's the opportunity for you to sync that information into MailChimp as well. So that you have a clear kind of line of um, kind of how that data has moved through those systems. And there's consistency from kind of when you've collected that information to when that information shows up in MailChimp. Um, and if you're doing those things, then um, you should have no problems with remaining compliant um, with your with your marketing. Perfect. Okay. Are you able to connect more than one audience to your e-commerce platform? Um, for example, big commerce to MailChimp. Um, so that is a good question. I can't speak specifically to big commerce, um, but typically you are able to connect different different um, connect to different audiences within MailChimp. Um, the other thing that I would consider though, is making sure that your audiences truly are separate. Um, a lot of times people start by thinking they need two different audiences when in re reality, they could be using something like tags to um, kind of segment out their, their one audience um, with two different types of uh, customers that you have in your audience base. Um, and that allows a lot more flexibility um, that allows you to get a much clearer kind of overarching view of your audience base. 
um, so that you can do more analysis across the board. Um, so I would really think about like, if you're considering having two separate audiences, are those customers really uh, unique and different in that like there would be very little overlap between those two audiences um, before you go down that route and would strongly consider uh, looking at tags as an option um, if do you think there could be some overlap between those two audiences? Thank you. Okay. So I use MailChimp for general marketing, not just my e-commerce. What other integrations are possible for my customers who I don't interact with through my website? Um, so other customers that you don't interact with through your website, um, I'm assuming that could mean uh, people that you're interacting with through like a physical store um, or things of that nature. Um, there are ways that you can bring that uh, information into MailChimp as well um, through things like forms. Um, uh, uh, our forms, our landing pages and forms have functionality to create QR codes where you can bring people to a landing page to give you their contact information and be added to your uh, MailChimp uh, audience. Um, so that's a great way to kind of, um, within a physical location, collect email addresses and contact information uh, that's gonna allow you to, um, to follow up with those folks um, in other ways. Um, I mentioned uh, social, so if you're not kind of, if social is kind of a main channel for you as opposed to a website, um, as I mentioned, you can put con uh, lead generation forms uh, on your Facebook page uh, to be able to collect that information. Uh, you can also uh, integrate with our ads uh, product for Facebook and Instagram to be able to bring that traffic um, into your audience. Um, so there, there are several ways that if you're not using a, a, a website as kind of your primary location that you can think about how do I collect contact information so I can continue the conversation. Okay, so how can I send a survey to a single customer rather than sending to the entire audience? Very good question. Um, so a couple of ways to think about it. Um, one is if you are trying to send a survey to uh, like a customer based on some sort of time trigger, uh, then our customer journey builder and autom automations is probably a good place to start. That allows you to send kind of one-to-one -one messages to each of your users at the right point in time um, so that you can send um, a survey after they take a specific action, whether it's you know engaging on your website or making a purchase or whatever that might be. Um, if that is not the use case that you have, uh, the other option that you have is tagging. Um, tags are pretty flexible in that you can create um, uh, you know, as many as you need to be able to segment your audience. Um, so there is a way that you could create kind of a segment of one person. I wouldn't recommend that. I think probably the, the easiest way to do it would be to set up an automation um, if you're able to, uh, to send kind of a one-to-one -one message to the right person at the right time. Okay, we have time for a few more. Um, what's the difference between MailChimp's retargeting ads and Google's ads? Good question. So really the way that we've looked at it is trying to consolidate your channels into one platform, right? So that it's easier for you to see all of your channels in one place, to leverage insights from email, for example, when you're building out your, your retargeting ads for Google. Um, so um, I say that to say, um, the actual uh, functionality of what you're building uh, in terms of Google retargeting ads in MailChimp is not different. You're not getting anything differently in terms of the actual deployment of your Google retargeting ads. But what you're gaining is the ability to quickly kind of take insights from a, another channel that you're using in MailChimp and leverage those as you're building your campaigns. You can also re-leverage um, assets that live in your content studio within MailChimp as you're building out your retargeting ads. So it's really about kind of helping you consolidate channels into one space and to hopefully um, make those processes more efficient in terms of building and deploying um, retargeting ads. Um, obviously, you can do the same, some of the same stuff uh, natively in the Google Ads platform, um, and there could be use cases for that, obviously, um, if you're doing some more complex, uh, running some more complex campaigns. Um, but we do find that, you know, people enjoy being able to see all of that information in one place and kind of deploy all their campaigns from one place um, and to then be able to do the analysis and, and gather the insights from those campaigns from one platform. 
So here's a good follow-up question. So do you have suggestions uh, for integrating Google ad campaigns with MailChimp Blast for the holiday season? Yeah, I think um, kind of what I just discussed a little bit earlier in regards to Facebook retargeting ads um, definitely applies with Google as well, right? You want to, um, you're going to be sending email blasts, um, assuming during the holiday season to drive interest and traffic into your website. Um, once you do drive that traffic, you can then leverage Google retargeting ads to follow up with the folks who maybe don't convert when they visit your website to remind them to come back and make a purchase. Um, so it really creates this nice cycle where kind of you're driving traffic with email, you're retargeting that traffic with Google um, retargeting ads, and then kind of ideally converting that traffic and starting that cycle all over again. Um, so I, I think that's a great way to think about how to use those two channels together um, during the holiday season uh, so that you're getting the most out of the traffic that's being driven into your site. Great. How do you keep integrations organized? What is considered an effective, useful integration? Uh, it's a good question. I think it's something, it's it's obviously different for every business, right? So. Uh, a useful integration for, for any business is going to be different depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your marketing, uh, what are your marketing objectives. Um, at the end of the day, I think what you should be looking for from an integration is um, what's going to provide the data that's going to be most impactful for my marketing strategy, um, which is why I, I kind of continue to talk about the idea of connecting your e-commerce store because that's such a um, treasure trove of data and unlocks so much more when you think about your marketing strategy. Um, so I would just think about what what do you want to accomplish with your audience? Is it is it about re-engaging people who have not um, made a purchase in a while? Is it about, um, you know, more efficiency with your operations, as I mentioned, with design tools? Um, what are your pain points in really being able to optimize your holiday uh, marketing strategy? And then from there, kind of determining what tools do you already use potentially that might have data that will kind of um, ease those pain points. Uh, there are also um, other things that you can think about in terms like technical um, uh, requirements of, of an integration. Um, in a lot of cases, you might want to consult with a developer if you have questions around that um, in terms of performance. Um, but the first thing that I would think about is how are you going to make sure that you can solve the pain points that you have going into the holiday season? And what tools am I using that are going to help me um, get the data to, to ease those? Okay, last question, it has two parts. Uh, so which integration do you think is best for driving sales? And which do you think is best for mapping customers? So best for driving sales, um, I'm, I'll, Go back again to e-commerce integration, regardless of what um, store platform that you use, uh, making sure that that's integrated with your marketing is the number one thing that you can do um, to drive sales, um, to drive repeat purchases, uh, to increase um, conversion of people who have uh, visited and maybe put something in their shopping cart but haven't. Um, made a purchase yet like there, there's so much that you can do to increase sales I think that example from uh, the case study for good die young is a great example of that right um, so sales um, I would I would definitely say that mapping customers is um, kind of dependent on your business right um, and you could have customer um, information coming in from a lot of different sources um, so for example if you're a b2b company you may use a sales CRM um, as kind of the basis for your for um, customer information. So you would obviously want to make sure that you have your sales CRM connected to the tool that you're using for your marketing. Um, if you're in a services business, you would want to make sure that the tools that you're using for your uh, appointment scheduling and invoicing and things of that nature are connected into your marketing as kind of the primary source of mapping customer data uh, into your marketing platform. Um, so it really depends on the type of business that you're in, in terms of what's going to be the best tool to map that customer data. Um, but at the end of the day, I think whatever the primary tools are that you're using to collect customer information, um, you should look at making sure that that tool is also connected into your marketing platform um, and just doing that evaluation for your business. 
All right, Jamal, that's all the time we have for Q&A today. Thank you so much. That was super helpful. Great. All right. Thank you, Amy. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, as a reminder, make sure that you join uh, Ben Kruger for his session uh, tomorrow and uh, have a great rest of the day. Thank you. <laughs>